Now, police in Cape Coast have questioned Special Development Initiative Minister Mavis Hawa Kumsin. Mrs. Kumsin, who is also the Member of Parliament for Ewutu Senya East, where pandemonium broke out during the registration exercise yesterday, has been at the receiving end of widespread criticisms following her admission that she personally fired gunshots at the registration centre located at Kaswa. We'll hear from the police on this shortly. Now, though, the four persons who were arrested in connection with that incident have been granted bail by a Kipko Circuit Court. The court presided over by Hana Dorinda Smith Arthur granted them a bill to a sum of 30,000 CDs each with two shorties, and one of the shorties should be a government worker whose net salary is 2,000 CDs. The accused were charged with conspiracy to commit crime, causing unlawful damage to the three motorbikes involved and discharge of firearms in a public place without authority. We'll hear from our correspondent Richard Kojonyako, but here are growing, there are growing calls for the prosecution of the minister, uh, Mavis Howard Kumsin. EC officials at the Step to Cry Center fled the scene as the exercise turned violent with motorbikes seized and set ablaze. Ms. Kumsin has been explaining that some of the cars in her convoy were surrounded by motor riders, causing her to fire a warning shot to disperse them. She also says the men who accompanied her to the center were not armed. Eyewitnesses, however, contradict this testimony. There is more in this report. As usual, we were doing our registration for the... An eyewitness explains the cause of the violence that marred an otherwise peaceful registration exercise at Kaswa. Joy News was there. The NDC candidate, Felix Koyo, accused the MP, Mavis Hawa Kumsin, of being behind the violence. I am saying it's on authority that she instructed that the people should be shot and their motorbikes being bent because she was there with folded hands. The MP spoke on the matter on Adum TV. First, she claimed when she arrived at the center, one of the cars in her entourage was surrounded by men on bikes. This was when she fired a warning shot. She insists the men who accompanied her to the center did not carry arms. Eyewitnesses contradict this narrative. First, on the cause of the violence, one says the men in the company of the MP tried to sack the people riding the bikes. Their refusal is said to have triggered the confusion. All of a sudden, they said there's a car with a, a, a bodyguard inside. That is how I could see. So as they come, they were claiming anyone who is not part of the, the ID car should move away. And there was a, a royal bike here. So they decided to take the bike out of the way and the guy said he should leave it, he would do it by himself. He just started beating the bikes, all the bikes around, put fire in it, beat the owners of the bike and just left. That's what happened. He also says, contrary to the minister's claims, the men were armed with not only guns. They were holding guns and staffs. Pinkers, guns, everything where they were holding it. So even you cannot stand, you have to run. Everybody was running away. And there was a paper spray and a lot of stuff. Another eyewitness confirms this narrative regarding the motorbike. So they just gathered it here and then they set fire on it and burn it for no reason. So the EC official realized what is going on and was so serious. So they just have to leave the place because here isn't safe anymore. A gentleman stationed at the center says the MP was present during the scuffle over the bikes and urged those around to be calm. She was here. She's telling her not to run away. Nothing is going to happen. Whilst people are pulling raffle, shooting. The account of the police even makes understanding the violence more confusing. The police officers confirm 
a gun was retrieved from the four suspects arrested for the violence. The officers also explained that these individuals were being held for the gunshots and the burning of the bikes. So we have arrested four people in connection with the... What about happening at, 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 at that registration center? Okay. And can you confirm that they had guns when they arrested her? We have seized one gun. First, a gun was fired. The MP claims it was her gun. The police made arrests and retrieved one gun. So were there others who fired gunshots? This eyewitness, a trader, had two bullet marks on her gate. Her shop is at least 500 meters away from the registration center where the violence broke out. Let's get on the ground now. Richard Kojonyako is our central regional correspondent. He's been following this storm. He joins me. Richard, you've been speaking with the police on this matter. Uh, they've been talking you through the charges as well as further actions to be taken. Tell us. Well, so um, at the moment, um, it's only one charge that we know of. And if she goes to the police station to write her statement, then it means that she will be charged with uh, the discharge of firearms in public place without authority. That is what the police has told us. But in the morning, what we got was that the police went to Madame Hawakumsen's house to take her caution statement. But later on, when we spoke with the police, the police said that, well, she's now been invited to come to the police station, the Kaswa Divisional Police Station, to uh, write her statement officially, and she could be arrested as a result of that. So I've been interacting with the PRO of the Ghana Police Service in charge of the Central Region, DSP Irene Opal. The police have taken a statement from uh, Madam Hawa Kunze, and she is assisting us with investigations. How come you've not arrested her, like uh, the four persons were arrested? When you talk of an arrest, I can invite you to the police station uh, to come and assist with investigation. At the moment you arrive at the police station, I'm taking you through the procedure at the police station. If you are a suspect, that we are taking caution statements from you. At that moment, you are under arrest. Arrest necessarily doesn't mean that I should handcuff you from your uh, wherever I find you before I bring you to the police station. But the moment you come to the police station and you are going through the procedure, and it will end with me granting you bail. At that moment, you are under arrest. Again, we can also invite people to come and give us witness statements and. During interviewing or interrogation, when you get the fact and you think that that person cannot be treated as a witness, but then a suspect, at that moment, that person is also under arrest. So why were the four people not treated the same way Madam Hawa Kumsin um, is being treated? Because the, 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 uh, the MP admitted um, firing, I mean, some gunshots yesterday. Why did we not arrest her yesterday uh, in, in addition to the four people and then put before court? Uh, when the four people, when we went to the scene of crime, it was the four people who were met, who were met. and our later our intelligence also uh, and uh, our intelligence led to uh, us identifying her that she's somebody who can also help with investigation. If she, if she is not the only person that we are taking the statement from. Currently, the Kansua Divisional CID have a lot of uh, per persons at their disposal that they are taking uh, uh, statements from them to help with our investigation. So she is not the only person that we couldn't get statements from yesterday. There are other people that our investigations have led to and we are taking statements from them as well. Finally, so does it mean that there were two uh, gunshot incidents? Because if you look at the particulars of offense of the four people, it also includes uh, they opening firearms without permission or without some permission. What we are investing now with uh, the, what we are investigating now, from the media space and other sources, we have uh, a, a confession statement from the honorable member of parliament that she also discharged uh, she also fired some warning shots 
that one is clear. Again, police, we pick a pistol at a scene of crime. And when it happens that way, we need to take all uh, arms that were used at the scene to a ballistic expert or the forensic lab for them to be examined. And then they give us an expert opinion. They will be able to tell us that this gun was fired on this date, this number of ammunition uh, came out of it, and this type of shells that you picked at the scene is coming from this uh, type of uh, arm. So we want the public uh, to be at peace. We want to assure them that the security situation at Kaswa is under control. Currently, the regional police commander COP Mr. Poman Liawini have dispatched more men for reinforcement purposes. Again, there are patrol teams at vantage points that we have identified as hotspots. So the security at Kaswa is calm and no cause for alarm. The place, the place where the incident happened yesterday, the Center for the Registration, they have also resumed and we are also providing security for the uh, EC officials who are working as well. Is Madam Hawakum still in possession of her gun? For now, they have started the process. They are taking the statement, I mean, keep close, and when they finish, I will get a feedback. So by the end of the day, I can get you. That's uh, DSP uh, Renopong there speaking to Richard Kujunako, who is still on Zoom with me. Richard, has there been any uh, update on it since she said at the time she was speaking to you that the uh, the processes were still ongoing regarding the gun that uh, Mrs. Kumsin had. Well, there hasn't been any update. We are yet, we are still at the police station. We are waiting for information from them. We do not know whether Madam Hawa uh, Kumsin has uh, been to the police station at Kaswa to give her statement as the police is, uh, the police are suggesting that she should uh, come to the police station to do so. We do not have any knowledge whether that has been done and whether the police, uh, the gun she used yesterday has also been uh, taken by the police. So we do not know anything ab about that. Mm. But this morning, uh, the four persons were put before court and they've been granted bail mm. uh, to the sum of um, 30,000 Ghana cities and one uh, with two charities to be justified. And one of the conditions is that one of them uh, should be a government worker whose uh, net salary is equivalent to 2,000 Ghana cities. And they are to reappear on the 18th of August 2020 for case management to begin. But in the me uh, meanwhile, they've been asked to be reporting to the Kaswa Divisional Police every Tuesday. So that is what transpired in court. That is as far as we know about this case. Okay, Richard, uh, let me find out from you whether we know these four people. Who are they? Well, um, they were picked up <coughs> yesterday uh, in the evening. Their names are Suli Razak, Majid Amadou, Suleiman Yusif, Razak Musa. These are the four people that were picked yesterday. We do not know where they belong, whether they are NDC or they are MPP or wherever they come from. So the police will be in the best position or the coming event will unfold so we know who really they are. But there is this information, all this document, by the way, uh, which we, we've had a copy, um, that says it's actually addressed to the district magistrate's court or addressed the district magistrate court, Winneba. And it says, um, police Winneba case, the Republic versus James Kofi Annan. Statement of offense, it goes on. Uh, first of all, refresh our memories on who James Kofi Annan is. Then I'll read what I have here in the document briefly, and we wrap it up. Richard. Well, so James Kofi Annan is the NDC candidate for the Efutu constituency. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, when the primaries were done, uh, the NDC candidate, the original candidate uh, after the primaries, uh, dropped out. And then um, James Kofi Annan came in, and so they acclaimed him as the NDC parliamentary candidate for the Efutu constituency. Now, this incident happened, we are told, um, yesterday when uh, during um, a review or a challenge uh, committee meeting, uh, he went to the committee and were, was asking a lot of questions. So that is the statement you find there and you are going to read that. Just let me take some excerpts. It says, um, 
a statement of offense. Offensive conduct conducive to the breach of the peace, contrary to Section 207.1 of the Criminal Offenses Act 29-60. Particulars of offense. James Kofi Annan, social entrepreneur, aged 46, says for that you on 21st July 2020 at 9.30 or 0930 hours um, at Letter Day St. Voters Registration Challenge Center at Winneba Junction and within the jurisdiction of this court without law or authority used abusive words, words to wit you are the chairman so it's essentially quoting what he says you are the chairman of the committee and so what you are the reason why we are not enjoying peace in Winneba, unquote. Which is intent, and according to the statement, this is this statement that uh, the gentleman made is intent to provoke breach of the peace or whereby a breach of the peace is likely to be occasioned. It is signed off by the prosecuting officer um, uh, 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 with an arrest warrant number, etc. Richard, I just want to find out, there is a much more detailed one attached to it, but... I just want to find out, it, are they charging him because of these words that he's purported to have used in the documents we have? I mean, do you have any further explanation from the police? Exactly. So the, the complainant in this case is the Futu um, Municipal Police Commander, and he was the chair for this um, committee that um, that is in question. He said after they tried Carmen, Mr. James Kofiana, when he appeared or when he came to where the committee was having the meeting, he did not mind anybody and then decided to give him some abusive words. And one of the words, that's what, what you read there, that if you are the chairman of the committee, and so what, you are the reason why we are not enjoying peace in Winneba, Winneba town. And the police commander takes this thing as, an, as offensive and uh, it is tantamount to uh, insulting a public officer. And so they chide, based on that, they chide him for, uh, on two accounts that he's disrupted a public event, one. And then the second one is that he has exhibited some um, insulting behavior towards a public officer. And so for that reason, it was put before courts. But the courts uh, said they should come uh, again to court, to the court, come back to the courts to observe some procedure because some certain procedures were not adhered to and so he's been granted bail. I see. Which means essentially that this is not necessarily all the charges that are to come against him. Yes, yeah, so basically two charges that are disrupting a public uh, activity and then the second one um, insulting or exhibiting some insulting behavior uh, towards a public officer who was doing, uh, then doing his duty as a police officer. And so these are the two charges that were put um, before the court today. Right, Richard, thank you very much. This is certainly a story that's still developing. I will certainly come back to it. Richard Kojonyako is our correspondent in the central region there. And on the back of the story,